welcome on this Sunday, the day of Pentecost, the day when the Holy Spirit came. And we also celebrate communion together this morning. Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his greatness, tell the nations what he has done. Sing praise to the Lord, tell of the wonderful things he has done. Be glad that we belong to him, let all who worship him rejoice. We sing together the words of hymn 111, they're on the screen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord our God, we worship you and we praise you. We cry out to you in thanksgiving and appreciation. For you are the one true God. There is no one else like you. No one can ever take your place. It is our great privilege to bring our praise to you this day. We are honored to be here in your presence and to glorify your name. Lord, on this day of Pentecost, we draw near to you. We're like those 120 believers gathered together in Jerusalem. We're waiting upon you, waiting for you to fill us with your Holy Spirit, waiting on your Spirit to encourage us to go out into our communities and tell of all the wonderful things that you have done for us. Lord, fill us with your power, Give us boldness to speak out. Give us the words to say to others. Help us to make them curious. Help us to make them ask questions about you, about your Son, and about your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for enabling your people to speak to all those gathered in Jerusalem on that great day. We thank you that each person heard about you and about the great things that you have done in their own languages. Enable each one of us, Lord, to do the same, to speak to others in a language that they will understand, 
so that they will come to see just how wonderful and amazing you are and become part of your family, our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Lord, receive now our offerings with our thanksgiving. Use them for your glory. Use them for the building up of your church. And hear us as we pray together in the words which your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now Anne's going to come forward with our uh, Old Testament reading. The readings from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, starting at verse 23. Sing to the Lord, all the world. Proclaim every day the good news that he has saved us. Proclaim his glory to the nations, his mighty deeds to all peoples. The Lord is great and is to be highly praised. He is to be honored more than all the gods. The gods of all other nations are only idols, but the Lord created the heavens. Glory and majesty surround him. Power and joy fill his temple. Praise the Lord, all people on earth. Praise his glory and might. Praise the Lord's glorious name. Bring an offering and come into his temple. Bow down before the Holy One when he appears. Tremble before him, all the earth. The earth is set firmly in place and cannot be moved. Be glad, earth and sky. Tell the nations that the Lord is king. Roar, sea, and every creature in you. Be glad, fields, and everything in you. The trees in the woods will shout for joy when the Lord comes to rule the earth. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His love is eternal. Say to him, save us, O God, our Savior. Gather us together. Rescue us from the nations so that we may be thankful and praise your holy name. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Praise him now and forever. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And thank, uh, thank you, Anne. Before you go, could you fetch me a Good News Bible from up the back, please? Thanks. Anne's back, we'll sing our first hymn, our second hymn even. Um, it's on the screen, Holy Spirit, we welcome you.
And now Fan's going to come and lead us in prayer, or on the, the tape. Let us pray. Lord, as we worship today on Pentecost Sunday, move us by your Holy Spirit and bring your good news to us all. Bring freedom, health and peace to all the broken people all over the world. Open our eyes to see you as you are and open our hearts to praise you. Give us a vision that will support us to move out of our comfort zones and lead us into new ways to serve you. Help us to be agents of your love to all people in a world where there is so much division and hate. Help us to be beacons of hope in a world that is sinking deeper into despair. And help us to be agents of your peace in a world that is torn apart by conflict and wars. We continue to pray with all our hearts for people in the midst of conflict, for those in the Ukraine, in Sri Lanka, in Rwanda, where the militia continue to suppress their people and in many other places. May government seek to support justice and truth as God wishes us to do. Grant us the grace to respect this world so that we in faith may see it through your eyes and help us to challenge poverty, injustice, inequality and climate change. This Pentecost, we pray for all unreached peoples and nations. We pray that our faith will be good news to them and help them to feel your love and presence to support them through the difficulties they are facing. We pray for refugees and displaced people, for those who are worshipping secretly and for those who are seeking you. May they meet the living God wherever they are. King of glory, whose ascended son carries the wounds of his suffering into heaven's bright sanctuary, and forever intercedes for our world in your radiant presence. We give thanks for the dedicated witness of your servant, Elizabeth, our Queen, in times of joy and in seasons of affliction. In your unfailing mercy, strengthen and uphold her, that she may diligently honour your gracious purposes and inspire your people to work together for the coming of your kingdom. May you guide and support all those in our own government, both locally and nationally, helping them to follow your path. We pray also for our families and friends at a time when we seem so beset with problems. Support us through each of our own challenges and help us to keep in mind those who are in a worse situation. God of healing, we pray for those who are in particular need, the sick and sorrowing, the lonely and the distraught, those tormented in body or mind and all those dedicated to helping them. May we always be willing to do what we can wherever we can, for those in need whose lives touch ours. We pray for those who mourn, and we remember with gratitude the lives of those who have passed on. Comfort the bereaved, whether their loss be recent or in the past, and particularly for those marking an anniversary at this time. We pray, loving God, that this Pentecost your Holy Spirit may find entrance to many minds that are darkened and closed by fear. Bring clarity of vision and calmness of mind. Lord, our hearts are free to follow you. So may we go out this week with renewed faith that others may see the joy of Christ in our lives. Merciful Father, 
Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're in the middle of, or at the end of, four days of great celebration, the Platinum Jubilee of our Queen. And I'm sure you'll agree that uh, it's been good to have something positive to celebrate after the last few years of things being not so good. It's been wonderful to see everyone join together to commemorate this great event, 70 years of Her Majesty as our monarch. Now, the Jewish people had three great times uh, when they celebrated, and they continue to celebrate each year. There's a feast of Passover, there's a feast of Tabernacles, or shelters, there's a feast of Pentecost, and we'll be looking at Pentecost today, on this Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost takes place on the 50th day after Passover, when seven weeks of the barley harvest have been gathered in, and the wheat harvesting has just started. The name is derived from the Greek word for 50th, Pentecostos. The Jewish people know it as Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. It also celebrates um, the time when Moses went up Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments from God on that mountain. All in all, Pentecost is a great day of celebration, and it's on this very day that we take up our reading from the New Testament. And I'm, I'm actually going to get you to read that out today. I've got the words here, but my voice is not great today. As you can see here. So I'm going to get you to read it out together, um, and I'll follow it in the Bible here. So um, I'll give you a start. When the day... <laughs> Well done. We'll need to do that again sometime. That was very good. So the Jewish people had gathered together in their thousands to celebrate this occasion. Uh, native Jews, Jewish converts from all over, as you read these words, these names, places very well. Mesopotamia, Arabia, North Africa, Crete, Rome, and many other places. There were 120 Christian believers who were huddled together in the one place on that day when, as someone has colourfully put it, all heaven 
broke loose. Suddenly there's a noise like a, a tornado. It blows through the room in the house where they are. A roaring fire appears out of nowhere and separates into individual flames, which touches each one of the believers. What on earth is going on, they must have thought. What was happening was that God was filling each one of them with his Holy Spirit. And the Spirit gives each one of them the ability to speak in other languages, languages that they had never learned. For many years I've been trying to, to learn uh, Spanish. I've got a bit rusty in the last wee while, but um, it takes a long, long time. The older you get to learn a language, but these believers spoke to the people there in their own languages, in their own dialects, and they had never studied a single word of those languages. The Holy Spirit gave them the power and the ability. And so they rush out into the street and they start to proclaim the great things that God has done. And the people, well, the people are gobsmacked. He's speaking my language, says a man from Mesopotamia. How do they know the dialect that I speak, says a Jewish convert from Egypt. This is unbelievable, says someone from Arabia. These people are all from Galilee, and yet they're speaking to us in our own language. How can this be, says a native of Rome? They're telling each one of us in our own languages about the great and wonderful things that God has done. I must be dreaming. But they weren't dreaming, and neither was anyone else on that day. It was very real. It was all happening. But is it still happening today? That's what we have to ask ourselves. We need to think about it. When was the last time any of us spoke to someone about the great things that God has done and is doing in our lives? Because that's what those 120 people on the day of Pentecost did, each single one of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they told everyone around them about God and what he had done for them. If someone has done something wonderful for you, what do you do? Do you keep quiet about it? Or do you tell others what they've done for you? Say you're drowning in the sea, someone dives in and rescues you. Do you keep quiet about it? Say you're in a burning building, someone comes in, a fireman or someone else, and carries you out. Do you say nothing about it? You thank that person. You thank them profusely. And you tell others about their bravery and how they have saved you from death. You talk them up, you praise them, you tell everyone how wonderful they are because they have rescued you. Well, has our God not rescued us? Has he not saved us from eternal death by sending us his son? Jesus has rescued us by dying in our place on the cross, paying the price for all our sins and rising from the dead to conquer it. As a hymn writer puts it, he rescued me from the darkest night and brought me into his glorious light. To know his presence is my delight. Hallelujah, he rescued me. Hallelujah, he rescued me. And read for us from First Chronicles 16. Proclaim every day the good news that he has saved us. Proclaim his glory to the nations. Tell everyone about his miracles. For the Lord is great and should be highly praised. We need to praise him. We need to tell others about him. We need to tell them what he has done and is doing for us. Martin Smith's hymn says, Shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. And earlier on in 1 Corinthians, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Graham Kendrick in his hymn says, Say it loud, say it strong. Tell the world what God has done. So let's stop for a moment and think about what God has done for us. He's done amazing and wonderful things for us. He has given us his only son to die on the cross. He has saved us from eternal death and damnation. He has brought us out to the deep darkness of sin and into his marvelous and glorious light. He has rescued us. He has redeemed us. We have had all our sins forgiven by him. He has chosen to forget all about them, just as if they have ever occurred. 
The Bible tells us that he puts our sins behind his back so he cannot see them. He puts them as far away as the east is from the west, and there can be no further than that. He has given us new life, life in all its fullness. He has brought us out of despair and depression. He has given us hope and purpose in our lives. He has made us his children, his sons and his daughters, his heirs, and joint heirs with Jesus himself. He has given us himself, his Holy Spirit, to come and be with us, to live in us, to dwell in our hearts through faith, to be our comforter, to be our helper, to be our guide, our mentor, our constant companion, our advocate, our energizer, our teacher, our encourager, and our friend. He has done so much for us and continues to do it. He has helped us when we needed it. He has lifted us up when we were knocked down. He has given us the strength to go on when our own strength was lacking. He has given us the right words to say at the right time. He has given us the patience to endure, endure things that have come our way. He has shown us the way forward when we were confused. He has enabled us to make the right decisions when we needed to make them. He has taken care of us even before we were born. He has looked after our families and those close to us. He has given us new friends, new brothers and sisters to enjoy fellowship with. He has encouraged us at just the right times. And he's watched over us constantly, never resting, never sleeping. He's provided for all our needs. He has answered our prayers. As Martin Luther puts it, when we've asked him for silver, he has given us gold. He has done all this and so much, much more. So why shouldn't we praise him? Why shouldn't we tell others about him? He has done all of this for us and continues to do so. Phil Wickham has a song called Great Things. O God, you have done great things. You have done great things. O God, you do great things. And the Lord has indeed done great things for all of us, and he continues to do the very same. He sorts out our lives for us. He's concerned even about the tiniest things in our lives because he knows that sometimes these tiny things can become big things to us. He's everything under control. And so we must tell others about him. We are compelled to tell others about him. Compelled to tell them how he helps us day after day after day. How he steps in when we don't know which way to turn. How he sorts things out for us often without us even knowing. We mustn't be shy or reticent about telling others. God himself will help us by his Holy Spirit. He will give us the boldness to speak up. He will even give us the words to say. How do I know? Because he tells us in his word. The Apostle Paul tells us in his first letter to the Christians in Corinth, and Paul says, when I first came to you, I was unsure how to go about things. And I felt totally inadequate. This is the great Apostle Paul. I was scared to death, if you want the truth of it, he says. And so nothing I said could have impressed you or anyone else. But the message came through anyway. God's Spirit and God's power did it. God's Spirit and God's power did it. And Jesus himself tells us in Matthew 10, when he's sending out his disciples with the good news, Jesus says, don't worry about what you'll say or how you'll say it. The right words will be there. The Holy Spirit will supply the words. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. The shy, retiring, frightened believers all huddled together in the one building. But when the Holy Spirit got to work on them, they rush outside and they begin to tell the people, everyone they met, about the great and wonderful things that God has done. It's great to be enthusiastic about that. I, I remember when our first uh, child was born, how um, I went up the street in Main Street, where we, we lived in Clamanisha, and uh, told everyone uh, what had happened because I was so happy. It'd be great if all of us could tell everyone what God is doing 
in our lives. The people said, what's happening? What's this all about? They were drawn to believers in what they were saying. In other words, they were drawn to what the Holy Spirit was enabling them to say. They were deeply curious about it all. Who wouldn't have been? The Bible tells us they were amazed and they were confused. The message translation puts it like this. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head nor tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here, they said. Now, I wonder if we can engender such reactions in people today when we tell those around us about what God is doing in our lives. Can we make them curious about God and about Jesus? Can we cause them to ask, what's this all about? Can we create a sense of wonder in the lives of those we speak to? I suppose there's only one way to find out, and that's to do it. Each day this coming week, God will bring each one of us into contact with many, many different people. Some are Christian believers, some are not. And there are times when the Holy Spirit will prompt us to speak out and to tell them about our faith. What are we going to do when this prompting comes? Are we going to ignore it? Are we going to stay silent? Are we going to talk about something else, something safe, something which would never cause amazement or wonder, something which would never cause them to think about God? Or are we going to obey that prompting and that leading and tell them about how we firmly and truly believe that God is at work in our lives and can be at work in their lives too? Sadly, as we know, our national church attendances are dwindling year after year. The church should do something about it, you say. And yes, it should. Yes, it must. But who is the church? The hymn goes like this. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. And so the responsibility lies firmly with us, with you and me. It's up to us to tell others what God is doing in our lives and what he can do in theirs. If we don't, then who's going to tell them? We must be bold. We must be strong. For the Lord our God is with us. We must speak to others about God confidently and gently as the Spirit leads us to do so. Here's a, a spoiler alert, as they say. Do you know what happened at the end of the day of Pentecost? After Peter told the crowd about Jesus and invited them to believe and receive the Holy Spirit, 3,000 of them responded. 3,000 believed and were baptized that day. Can you remember how many we started with? 120. 120 believers, and now they had 3,000 plus. More than 25 times the number that they had when they started that day. Not a bad increase in membership in 24 hours. I'm sure our Kirk Sessions, our Presbyteries, our General Assembly would be more than pleased with such an increase. It was God who did something amazing that day. Something incredible, something wonderful. And God, the same God, can do something amazing, something incredible, something wonderful in Selkirk and in Ashkirk and in Ettrick and Yarrow. But he wants to use you and me to help him do it. He will give us the opportunity. He will provide the power. He will give us the confidence to do so. He will even give us the words to say. Are we up for that challenge on this Pentecost Sunday? Are we ready to follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit? Listen to what the Spirit is saying if you have ears to hear. Are we up for that? Are we ready to speak up? Are we ready to cause those that God brings into uh, our presence in this coming week, ready for them to ask, what's it all about? Are we ready to speak up and speak out and tell others about what God has done? Shall we pray? 
Father, it must have been an amazing sight on that day of Pentecost when those 120 believers burst out into the streets and started speaking in these strange languages that uh, they couldn't really understand, but the people around them did, telling about the wonderful things that you have done. Lord, often we're shy and reticent. We're frightened to, to tell others about our faith. We need the power of your Holy Spirit to send us out, to prompt us, to give us the words, to bring into our company those that we should speak to about you. So, Lord, fill us with your Spirit and enable to do that this week and in the weeks and months and years to come. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing together the words of Stuart Townend and Keith Getty's wonderful song about the Holy Spirit, hymn about the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, living breath of God. This is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ, and all who believe in him are made welcome around this table. During his earthly life, Jesus often shared meals with his friends and others to show how special they were to him. And at what we now know as the Last Supper, Jesus broke the bread and he poured the wine as signs of the great sacrifice that he would soon make for all of us. Jesus told his disciples to follow his example and remember him in this way. As the followers of Jesus today, we now respond to his command and to his gracious invitation. Shall we pray?
Lord God, we come now to the table of your Son, who by his death on the cross has made possible the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future. And by his glorious resurrection from the dead, has made eternal life possible to all who believe in him. Lord God, take this bread and this wine and set them apart from their ordinary uses to this holy and sacred use today, so that as we eat and drink, they may remind us of the body of Jesus broken for us and of the blood of Jesus shed for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And so on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took some bread. And after he thanked God for the bread, he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this to remember me. And then after the supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and he said, this cup is a new relationship with God, and it is sealed with my own blood. Do this every time you drink of it to remember me. This is the body of Christ, broken for you on the cross. Please taste and see that the Lord is good. You may take your piece of bread. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you on the cross. Drink and remember all of you. Please take your grape. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you for this simple meal that we've enjoyed today around the table of the King. We thank you for all that you have given us, for all that we have promised. You have promised us as we have gathered around this table. You have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. And Lord, we pray for others, Lord, especially for those who cannot be with us this day, in particular those who may be ill at home or in hospital. We thank you, Lord, that we can remember them at this time and ask that they would feel your presence with them at this time and in the times to come. Continue to bless us this day, Lord, in all that we do. May we go out from here with the good news of Jesus within us, ready to share that good news with others that you would bring into our minds and into our paths. Lord, we bring this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to spend an hour wee time in prayer for um, a couple of different families. One is, um, many of you have heard of the sad death of Jesse Richardson. Um, our funeral will take place here in the church a week on Monday. That's a week tomorrow at 12.45. And we will pray for Helen and Christine and Alan and other members of the family just now. 
Uh, also, I read um, just this morning that there had been a, a tragic fire out in Bangladesh. Some, at least 16 people uh, had uh, died in the fire and over 150 were injured. So we would pray for those who were injured and also the, their families, the families who lost loved ones. So shall we pray? Father, we give thanks for, for Jessie and for her many years of, of life and for all that she did in her lifetime. We pray that you would be with us and our family a week tomorrow when we celebrate that life and give thanks for her. We pray for our family, for Helen and Christine and Alan, for in-laws and grandchildren and other relatives. Bring them your comfort this day, Lord, and especially next Monday when they, as they continue to grieve and to miss Jesse. And Lord, as we think further afield, we think of those who lost their lives in Bangladesh, so far from here, but so near to your heart as well. Lord, be with those who lost loved ones. Be with those who are injured and in hospital. We pray for, for healing and comfort for them. Be with those that seek to counsel them and to heal them. Lord God, there are just so many bad things seem to happen in our world. We need to pray for people who go through these hard times, whether they're close to us in our own town or far away on the other side of the world. Lord, you hear our prayers. And so we bring all these families and others before you now. And we bring others before you in the silence. Lord, we thank you that we can pray for others and that others are praying for us in our different situations. Hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our final hymn, 112, are on the screen. God, whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard, let there be light. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all on this Pentecost Sunday and forevermore.